Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Another day, another video about hematology. Today, we'll talk about acquired angioedema. In the previous video, we have talked about hereditary angioedema. Today, it's acquired angioedema. The patient is older. Now, let's get started. Quick review of the previous videos. We start with high molecular weight kinesin converting into bradykinin thanks to calicrin. High molecular weight kinesin activates factor 12 and 11. Calicrin only activates factor 12. Effective people think win win. If calicrin is gonna make factor 12 win, factor 12 is gonna make calicrin win. Pause the feedback loop. Calicrin activates 12 into activated factor 12, which activates pre calicrin to calicrin, which activates factor 12 again and again and again. High molecular weight kinesin by calicrin, bradykinin, bradykinin does all of the stuff as you know. If you are in the plasma, you have high molecular weight kinesin, plasma calicrin, bradykinin. If you are in the tissue, you have low molecular weight kinesin, tissue calicrin, calidin. If calicrin stimulates this step, ACE is gonna inhibit this step. Not only this, it's gonna degrade bradykinin into inactive metabolites that well, that's why we call ACE a kinase. Side effects of ACE inhibitors, as you know, ACE inhibitors inhibit ACE, which means lots of bradykinin because it's uninhibited, dry cough, angioedema, hypotension, renal impairment, natriuresis, acidosis, and hyperkalemia. Angiotensin receptor blockers, on the other hand, they rarely have cough or angioedema. There are different types of angioedema, believe it or not. We are talking here about the complement-related and kinin-mediated angioedema. We have talked about hereditary angioedema in the previous video. Today it's time for acquired angioedema. Quick review of hereditary angioedema. Normally, we have C1 stress inhibitor inhibiting calicrin, leading to no secretion of radikin. However, in hereditary angioedema, there is no C1 stress inhibitor. Calicrin is left uninhibited, converting high molecular weight kinesin into lots of bradykinin causing symptoms. It's an autosomal dominant disorder, no C1 stress inhibitor, lots of calicrin, lots of bradykinin causing symptoms. The three types of hereditary angioedema, I had a mnemonic about them in the previous video. You are missing a lot if you are not getting my 50 hematology cases by going to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Come on guys, they are awesome. What are the functions of C1 estrase inhibitor? It inactivates calicrin, inactivates C1 estrase in the classical complement pathway, inactivates factor 12 in the intrinsic coagulation pathway. Why do we call it complement? Because it complements the antibody's action. We have three pathways, classical, alternative, and lectin. The only difference is who will pull the trigger? Who will start the cascade? In classical pathway, it's the antigen antibody complex. So here's the classical pathway, antigen antibody complex, C1 into C1 active by the C1 estrase, C4 and C2 into C42 and C4A, C3 convertase, C5 convertase, the MAC, which will attack. In hereditary angioedema, you don't have the C1 estrase inhibitor, C1 estrase is left uninhibited to go crazy activating the complement. The clinical picture of hereditary angioedema is the same clinical picture as acquired angioedema. So pay attention, we have two birds by one stone. So we have lots of bradykinin leading to increased vessel permeability, recurrent attacks of angioedema in the face, neck, extremities, eyelids, and the genitalia. Recurrent attacks of abdominal pain that can mimic pancreatitis and colitis. The patient may have a history of unnecessary surgeries because many surgeons are idiots. Then the recurrent episodes, they last one to three days and they resolve in one to two days. And the patient is probably an adolescent. This is different. In hereditary, the patient is young. In acquired angioedema, the patient is older because it's acquired. It's not a genetic problem. It's not a hereditary problem. So you may think that the patient is older and you will be correct. No urticaria, no pitting, no itching, which distinguishes the hereditary angioedema from the allergic angioedema. The lab results in hereditary angioedema and acquired angioedema are a little different. So here is hereditary angioedema, C1 normal, C2 decreased, C1 INH or C1 inhibitor decreased, bradykinin high, precalicrin low, high molecular weight low, IgE and isinophil is normal because it's not an allergy. 
treatment of hereditary angioedema is the exact same treatment as acquired angioedema so pay attention again don't give the stuff because it's not an allergy it's not histamine it's bradykinin baby ACE inhibitors are contraindicated in acute attacks you C1 inhibitor by infusion Icataband which is a receptor blocker Acalantide which is a calicrine, calicrine inhibitor if you don't have all of these, use racemic epinephrine to help the airways. If you don't have these fresh frozen plasma, but keep it for the prevention prophylaxis. It's not recommended during the acute attacks. And of course, if you don't have all of these, intubate baby, and in some cases, even tracheate, tracheostomy. Prevention of future attack, called prophylaxis, denazole C1 inhibitor protein infusion and the fresh frozen plasma. Why? Because the fresh frozen plasma contains the missing C1 inhibitor. Now, welcome to today's topic, acquired angioedema. So let's nip it in the bud and kick it in the bud. Acquired angioedema, it's acquired, so it's not genetic problem. They are O2 antibodies against C1 estrase inhibitor. Remember, hereditary angioedema, we had a genetic deficiency of C1 estrase inhibitor. In acquired angioedema, on the other hand, we have O2 antibodies got you next no family history because it's not hereditary it's acquired less common than hereditary okay manifests later in life because it's acquired it's not hereditary it affects patients with monoclonal gammopathies remember the myeloproliferative neoplasms also known as paraproteinemias as well as malignancies especially lymphoma diagnosis c1 here is low if you remember hereditary angioedema, C1 was normal, but here C1 function and C1 level are decreased. C2 and C4 are decreased because they are over-consumed by the activated classical complement pathway. How to treat them? They are exactly the same, the same as hereditary angioedema. In the next video, we'll compare between hereditary and acquired angioedema. In the meantime, Please subscribe to my channel, follow me on Patreon, you can support this channel there, you can get all of my notes and my 50 hematology cases. Thank you for watching, until next time, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Metacosis Perfectionalis.